In the back we have the factory reservoir and the line that runs from the pump to the reservoir to the engine block. We're going to be installing a new reservoir and using a new AFCO supplied hose to go from the pump to the reservoir. Uh, we took a small piece of that hose, about seven inches long, and we'll be using that to go from the reservoir to the engine block so the factory hose doesn't have to be cut. We're going to take the anti-abrasion sleeve off of the factory hose, place it on our new hose. Because the fitting on the bottom of the new tank comes down, we're going to use slightly different routing than the factory setup. The new reservoir has two, two mounting points, but really only one of them needs to be used. Now that we've secured the reservoir, we're going to finish routing the line down to the factory pump. It will need to be trimmed to fit. Now we're going to install AFCO's wiring harness for the dual fans. The fuse holder mounts using an existing bolt on the relay block. Power is obtained from the factory fuse box. Next, the relay is mounted using one of the bolt holes at the back of the PCM. Now we can route our wiring harness underneath the fuse box, making sure we stay away from exhaust heat and to the front of the car. We're going to connect both of the grounds for the wiring harness to this bolt. We've taken the factory intercooler pump harness and pulled the white with red stripe wire out of the loom, cut it, and inserted it into this little wire tap. This orange wire goes to the AFCO supplied relay harness. Make sure this is secure so the wires are spliced correctly and won't pull out. And then pack these back in here. Run this harness to the pump. Now we can run our harnesses to our fans.
got our new AFCO dual fan heat exchanger wired up and plumbed. Before we put the bumper back on, we want to make sure that our wiring is good and there's no leaks. Um, first, we want to make sure that there is a fuse installed in the fuse holder for the AFCO dual fan wiring harness. Now we can pull out the factory intercooler pump relay and install a jumper harness across the two large terminals. Now the system's running, you can hear the dual fans operating. We want to make sure we get the system full of fluid and get all the air out. You can look inside the intercooler tank and see we've got a pretty good amount of flow going. The new heat exchanger is actually less restrictive, so it increases water flow dramatically, though not too much to cause the water to move too fast. Uh, we refilled it with some antifreeze, but we also used a fair amount of water. Water cools best, so it's not necessary to use a lot of antifreeze unless you're in a very cold climate. we can turn our system off and start putting everything back together. This foam bumper support is held in with plastic push pins. You don't want to forget to put this on because then you'll have to take your whole bumper off again. Now we kind of hang the bumper back on, just the way we took it off. Get our bolts started up here and tighten them up later. Make sure these alignment tabs slide in under the headlight. And then bring this corner of the bumper up on these studs. Install, reinstall the 10 millimeter nuts with the large washers. We're finalizing installing the front bumper by tightening up the screws that go from the splitter to the fender liner. Now we're going to attach the screws that hold the lower radiator splash shield. This installation is done a lot more easily on a lift, but doesn't necessarily have to be done on a lift. It can be done on just a simple set of ramps in your driveway.